Welcome back to the final video of the database setup portion of uh, getting STS to run. Uh, once again, like I said, if, uh, it goes a little quick, so feel free to pause it, back it up if necessary. In this video, we're going to be talking about jobs. Now, by jobs, I mean the trains that run across the line and also uh, the switch uh, the yard jobs and so on. And so we'll, uh, we'll be setting, setting up those portions of the database. Before we do that, we just want to have a little review of what we've done so far. We've set up the commodities, car codes, stations, and locations. And stations, locations will need uh, definitely to be, for, to be done before we set up jobs. And we did shipments in cars. The uh, first four were done in the first video, shipments in cars in the previous one. And now we're going to do jobs. Again, just a quick review. Here's our schematic of our branch line. But if we zoom out a little bit, it actually looks like this. So we have Chicago in the east, St. Paul in the west, Emerald Junction in the middle, and our branch line running down to Emerald. You see that we have uh, we need yard jobs both in Chicago and St. Paul uh, in order to move cars between customers and the yard. Once uh, the cars are in the yard, we have a westbound manifest freight that takes them from Chicago to St. Paul for the westbounds, drops off and picks up at, at Emerald Junction. And we'll also have an eastbound manifest freight that do the same thing. It'll take cars from St. Paul to Chicago, also drop off, pick up in Emerald Junction. We'll have a, an eastbound uh, way freight that runs from Emerald into Emerald Junction and a westbound that goes back the other way. So those are the jobs we'll need to set up. Now, in order for STS to know how a job works, it needs to know what stations that through which that job will travel and what that job will do at each one of those stations. Will it set out, pick up, or will it do both? Uh, for jobs that are in a just a yard job, we don't necessarily use the word set up and uh, set out and pick up. We'll talk about spotting and pulling and so on like that. Now there is a uh, typo here on this uh, this slide. The two way freights actually need to uh, do both pick up and set out at each location because the way freights are actually ag acting as yard jobs in those locations. If we had a yard job that did uh, take care of Emerald by itself, then this uh, these settings here for the way freights would be correct because the yard job would put the train together, the way freight would pick it up, head out, drop it off. Uh, but because those way freights do switching at both those locations, uh, we do need to tell STS that both the westbound and eastbound, eastbound way freights will both pick up and set out at both locations. So here you see that I've entered the six jobs into the database uh, using the database maintenance functions. Um, I just used uh, alpha or alphabetic uh, names for them. You can put in train numbers. You can use some of the alphanumeric labels that uh, railroads use, the, uh, use these days, as long as they're unique. The other column there is the are the job uh, instructions. This is sort of an outline of what each job is supposed to do, and how detailed you make it or how broad you leave it really is up to you and your crew. This information is displayed on the back of the switch list, uh, when either if you print them out or uh, if they display them on a mobile device. And so these are the these are the instructions that the crew needs to complete their job. It tells them where to pick up cars, where to set out cars. If there's detailed instructions in there, like they need to put cars on a certain track or pick them up from a certain track, you can put that in there. But the contents of those descriptions, again, is, is really up to the operator, and it depends on, on uh, how, how well the, the crews are at operating the jobs. The next thing we have to do is to go through each job and tell STS which stations that job will pass through in order and what tasks they'll do at each one of them. Will they set out, will they pick up, or will they do both? So this is where you have to kind of think about um, what you want your jobs to do. And it sometimes takes a little bit, a little planning, and you can modify these later on. I mean, uh, whatever you put here is not locked in stone. If you operate a few uh, through a few sessions and find out things aren't working quite right, you can always go back here and, uh, and edit this. So to add, these different steps to a job, the different the list of stations where the job will uh, will go. All you do is you click on that link, and it'll bring up a, another form. This is what you'll see after you click on a jobs link. 
This is a form you use to both edit the job description in case you want to make changes, make it a little more detailed, uh, remove some of the maybe uh, extraneous details. And you also use it to add the job steps, as they're called. These uh, are a list of stations that through which the job will travel. And all you do is you enter a sequence number. You could, uh, as long as they're in order, it doesn't really matter what numbers you use. I normally go by tens. Then you select a station from the drop-down list, because remember you added stations into the database already. And then you tell the job, are they going to set out or pick up or both? And then there's some uh, remarks over on the right-hand side. And what I use this for is just to enter uh, some information to kind of give me a little background on why uh, the job is doing this. This doesn't get printed or displayed on any switch list or anything. But if I, if I have to go back and edit this or make some changes, uh, my comments there in the remarks thing will, will uh, help me kind of get an idea why, why I did what I did in the first place. So here you can see the job steps for the eastbound manifest rate. This is the manifest rate that starts in St. Paul at the St. Paul Yard, and it uh, goes through Emerald Junction and terminates in Chicago. Uh, on your railroad, you may have, you probably will have way more stations than what we have here, but again, this is just a, a demonstration. And so in the St. Paul Yard, the only thing that job is it picks up, it picks up cars that are headed uh, westbound. Then it, uh, at Emerald Junction, it both sets out and picks up. It sets out cars that are headed for either Emerald Junction or Emerald, and it picks up eastbound cars. Then when it gets to Chicago, it sets out all the cars in this train, and the crew ties up. So here you can see the uh, job steps for the westbound manifest freight. This is the one from Chicago to St. Paul, again, setting out and picking up at Emerald Junction. And you can see that it's organized the, the same way that the eastbound uh, manifest freight is. Next, we see the eastbound wave freight's job steps. And it only has two locations, Emerald and Emerald Junction. And uh, as I mentioned before, the, uh, we, need to, we need to have it uh, be able to set out and pick up in Emerald. So we'll fix that before we get to the uh, we're actually running the simulation. And finally, the westbound wave freight. Uh, this is the one that also it uh, also switches both locations, so we need to be able to check that box that says pick up for, for Emerald. Now, you notice that the Chicago yard job and the St. Paul yard job will be the same. Only has one location. It picks up and only, only one station. It picks up and sets out, and that way it can service all the industries that are in Chicago as well as the yard. St. Paul is organized the same way. So uh, yard jobs have, uh, will only have one station. They'll have both the set out and pick up boxes marked. So now we've got the instructions for the jobs out there. We have the jobs set up and all the stations are listed for their own travel and what they're going to do to each one. But we haven't told the station people anything. We haven't uh, given any instructions to the yard masters, the freight clerks, and uh, so on. We need to do now is go back to the routing instructions. If you remember in the very uh, first setup video, we talked about entering stations, and we said we'll get to the routing instructions later. Well, now is the time to do that. Once you have the jobs identified that will be running on your railroad, now you can go to each station and add the instructions that will tell the yard clerks, the freight agents, with, uh, to which trains the cars will be assigned. In other words, which trains will pick up which cars as they come through. The job instructions tell the crews uh, where to drop off, where to set out cars. The routing instructions, uh, as you'll see once we get into uh, setting up the switch list, the routing instructions tell the station personnel which train will pick up which, uh, which car. And this is similar to the prototype railroads when a, when a job came in, they would go to, if there was nobody at the station, they would go to their bill box and pick up a switch list and a bunch of way bills, and that would tell them which cars they were going to pick up and take with them. Here you can see the uh, routing instructions for the Chicago yard. It says that there are any cars in the yard for Chicago customers, those are handled by the Chicago yard job. Any other cars in the yard, they must be westbound because... Uh, all the other cars are, would be destined for Chicago customers. So all the other cars in the yard are going to be handled by the westbound uh, manifest freight. Emerald Junction routing instructions are a little more complex. 
They said that all Chicago cars, any car going to a Chicago customer, will be handled by the eastbound manifest freight. Any cars going to the St. Paul customers will be handled by the west, westbound manifest freight. All cars for Northwest aggregates will be uh, handled by the westbound way freight. And any emerald cars will also be handled by the westbound way freight. We need to have that aggregate car clause in there because those are that is a customer at Emerald Junction. When we get to Emerald, that's really easy. All outbound cars are handled by the eastbound way freight. Uh, there's not much, uh, not much thinking going on there. And finally, up in the St. Paul yard, any cars for the St. Paul customers are going to be handled by the St. Paul yard job, and all other cars, which are all eastbounds, will be handled by the eastbound manifest freight. At this point, we want to uh, do one more thing. The database is all set up now. We want to make sure we have a backup copy of everything we've done. We spent all this time putting information in. So in order to do that, we go to the database maintenance section, click on create a backup copy, uh, enter a name. I normally put in like a, uh, the name of the railroad and then the date that the, I made the backup, and then click the backup button. Uh, this, uh, what this does is it creates a separate file on the database that's outside the database itself. So if you would ever have any problems with the database, should it become corrupted or destroyed, you always have your backup file. You could also take that backup file and store it on a removable device. And if you ever have any uh, problems with uh, STS uh, and contact me by email for some tech support, I'll probably ask you this to uh, send me a, a backup copy of your database because that way I can load it up into my version of STS and kind of see what the problems are. Okay?